Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts and today is video number three of the Garden Archway series. Y'all, we're making an art quilt and today we're actually making the pieces. So with that said, I want to let you know right from the beginning, this is probably one of the longest videos in this series. So here's what I'm going to do. If you open up the description box, click on the little arrow, open up the description box, I'm going to put timestamps so that you can skip around to the sections that might be helpful for you. And if you don't know where to start, where to even start with this quilt, then I recommend starting at the beginning and watching all the way through. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make your pieces for the Garden Archway quilt. I'm going to be showing you uh, if you want to use muslin to create your pieces, if you want to use freezer paper to create your pieces, and if you want to use a fusible, I'm using heat and bond light. I'll show you that. And then uh, we're going to start creating some pieces and I'm going to show you the progress in my quilt, the small one. I love it. And then at the end of today's video, I'm going to bring you over to the long arm where I have it loaded and I'll show you some things that even if you're not doing it on a long arm or a quilting frame, that you might want to consider even if you're making the small one and you're going to be quilting on your domestic sewing machine. So some techniques to consider. So stick around to the end to see that process too. All right, y'all. Don't forget the timestamps are down in the description box and let's get started. We are ready to start making some pieces. So we're going to start with the half size version of this quilt. You see I have the pattern laid out here and uh, here is my foundation fabric. One of the reasons why I wanted to do this quilt in two different ways is uh, to show you a demonstration of just some of the ways that you could do this. Now I want you to take a close look at the pattern. Each one of your pieces has a solid outline defining the shape for its piece, but you'll see there's a small gap in between all of your pieces. And I really designed it so that if you left this small gap between your pieces and you chose a background color for your foundation fabric uh, that you really loved, you could use this as a leading, giving your quilt a stained glass appearance. So if you cut your pieces exactly on the line, everything, that small little space surrounding your pieces would shine through and really give a nice stained glass appearance. So that's what we're doing with this smaller quilt. That's why I have a darker foundation fabric. So we're going to demonstrate a couple of different methods for creating your actual pieces. And the first way we're going to start with is with some muslin. And we talked about this in uh, video number two. I'm just using uh, a very affordable grade muslin. You can see right through this muslin. Uh, one of my preferred, I'm showing you th three of my preferred ways of doing it, but one of the reasons why I love using muslin is because you can acquire a great large amount of it at a very reasonable price. And then you can also sew through this. So I'm going to be showing you starting with our first piece, number eight, on the half size quilt with muslin. So I'm going to bring this over. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trace right on the line our uh, piece number eight. I'm going to be using all kinds of markers, whatever I have, because at this point it doesn't matter. We're going to be covering this muslin with our pretty fabric and you're not going to see the lines. So whatever you can mark your lines with would be great. Again, you're not going to see them. And I'm just tracing right on the line all the way around. We will be cutting out this piece from the back side. So whatever you use to trace out your pieces, it would be good if you can see your markings 
on the reversed side of your muslin. Just like this. All the way around. I even like to put the little number in there. <laughs> this piece is pretty easy not to get it confused with any of the other pieces, but as we start working our way up, you might want to mark the number on your piece so that you don't lose track of which piece it is because some of these look very close to one another. So here's my piece. Here's my piece and you see I have a little bit of fabric all the way around and that is fine. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our color swatches. So for color number eight, color number eight, we're using a stone color. Now here's where the fun really starts, y'all. I thought walking into this garden through this archway, you'd be walking on like a stone sidewalk, right? So I assigned a stone color for this piece, but maybe your garden is through a grassy meadow <laughs> with a stone wall that you walk through. So if you wanted to change this to our grass, that would be lovely. And I hope that you feel like you could do that if that's what you want. My garden meadow, we're walking uh, along a stone pathway to approach our stone wall with the archway. So I've chosen a stone color. The fabric that I have chosen for my stone colors is this and it's pretty close to the swatch in the pattern. This is a flannel, <laughs> it's a flannel. Uh, let's take the number off here. And I have a great big piece of it. This was actually a quilt back for another quilt. I believe this was a t-shirt quilt, I can't remember. We're gonna take a piece of this flannel Let's open that up. Open it up. Just like this. And we are going to just do a rough cut and give ourselves a piece of this flannel. So I'm not moving all of this stuff around. I'm just going to cut a piece off. Ooh, don't cut through my pattern. <laughs> so I have my piece of gray fabric. We're going to actually adhere the gray fabric right over top of our muslin foundation, okay? Now to do that, you could use some fusibles if you want. Uh, <laughs> my preferred method is using glue. Now, when I show glue in my videos, people often say, uh, won't it gum up your needle or won't it mess up your machine? And in my experience of using glue for several years in my quilts, uh, I have never found it to gum up my needle. And here is why. We're gonna use glue to tack down instead of pins our fabric to the muslin. But we're gonna dry the glue, either with a hot iron or we're gonna just let it sit and dry. So we're never bringing any wet glue over to the sewing machine. It's all dry. And then at that point, it's just like using any kind of fusible products like Heat and Bond or Wonder Under. Those are all fusible products and you can absolutely sew through it. Uh, I, I watch tons of videos on YouTube and one of my favorites, uh, I'm going to actually link her channel right in the description box below. Her preferred glue is the Aline's Tacky Glue and yes, she makes glorious glorious collage style art quilts and so we're going to be using this and you could even use a glue stick uh, 
The one thing I'd say about the glue stick is it's not quite as a strong hold as your wet glues. If you are covering your quilt with tulle, then absolutely you could use this. Uh, and then uh, another favorite of mine is the uh, Elmer's Glue All or School Glue works the same. This one's a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna take the lid off of my glue. It's a little gunky. And instead of using pins, I'm gonna be applying glue, not completely covering this piece with glue, okay? Just a little bit here and there. This bottle is almost empty. Just like this, dots, 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 around the edges. like that and some through filling in at the middle larger section just like that the glue is going to act like pins and now we're just going to lay this flannel right over top just like that making sure it covers all of the lines we're going to smooth that into place Now, if you're impatient like me, you can bring this right over to a hot iron and dry that glue. <laughs> and then you can immediately start working. Or you can just leave this to dry, just walk away and let it dry. I am going to go take this to the iron and I will be right back. Coming back from the iron, my piece is dry. Flipping it over, you can see the outline from the reverse side of the muslin, so I can see exactly where I want to cut. And the glue has just bonded these two pieces together. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and reveal the shape of our piece, and I'm just gonna cut my piece directly on the line. So here we go. Here is piece number eight. That should just fit right inside the lines just like that. So here is our first piece. Now you could leave it just like that. And I think that looks pretty spectacular. But <laughs> you could also take it to the next level. And that's one of the reasons why I love using the muslin is because you can add pieces right to this, right? You could add pieces to this if you wanted to. Now, uh, in the last video, I showed my fabric selection and I showed that I got these two pieces because I just, I, I couldn't pass them by and I thought they would look really awesome in this quilt somewhere. So, we're going to have some free, fun, creative time with this. I'm just going to add it like a little pathway through here, like, like it looks a little worn where people have traveled in and out. You could add some green grass. You could add some flowers going through here. There, the possibilities are endless. But I just want to elevate this just a little bit and add uh, a little bit more interest. So I'm just going to bring you along. I will be uh, just gluing these pieces down either with a glue stick or some wet glue. And I'm just freehanding the pieces and laying some, some fabric down onto this piece. As I mentioned, this part is totally optional. You can do this for one of your pieces. You could do this for all of your pieces, or you don't have to do this to any of your pieces. <laughs> Just gonna go through and cut some strips of this fabric that I really want to use in this quilt 
I'm not measuring. I'm not being exact. They're all different lengths and different thicknesses. And I'm just going to have fun and play around with these bits of fabric. What I think is really neat is that you can transform any piece of fabric into something that's totally unique to you. No one else will have a piece that looks like this. <laughs> I think that's kind of neat. So you see how quickly we cut out position number eight. You could go through the pieces pretty quickly cutting out your pieces with the muslin. If you want to do uh, this kind of transformation with other small bits of fabric on it, then you can see you could really spend a lot of time transforming your fabric. I really love the fabric with the postage stamps in it. <laughs> I have to include that in there somewhere. Now that I have all the pieces into place and I have the look that I'm going for, I can just tack down these pieces with a small amount of glue and I'm just putting some little small dots here and there on each one of the pieces just to really hold them in place while I'm working with this larger section, piece number eight. I really want to bring you along so that you can see this whole process. I don't want to skip through this part so that you get an idea of uh, the work involved if you want to do this kind of collage on your pieces. Of course, we're starting with the biggest piece, so this is going to take the longest. <laughs> So here we are. Now that all of our pieces are glued down, I'm just going to make sure to flatten them all out nice and flat. Just like that. Now you're going to leave this to dry or again you could dry it with a hot iron uh, and get that dry so you're ready to move to the next step. Now at this point you could leave this just like this and attach your piece number eight. I would go through and trim any of the extra bits that hang over the edges that we just placed over top of our piece. You could trim that all away. And then take your muslin piece number eight and adhere it directly to your fabric foundation. But one of the advantages of using the muslin as the backing of your piece is that when the glue is dry, you can bring this over to the sewing machine and stitch some of these pieces down, especially if you're not using tool to cover your entire quilt, it would be so much easier to bring over this piece and stitch down all of these pieces versus 
assembling the whole quilt and then maneuvering the whole quilt to stitch all of these pieces. So that's an advantage of using the muslin as your backing. Not only is it cost effective, but you can do lots of stitching right through this. Now that's what I'm going to do so that I can show you. I'm gonna go ahead and do some stitches just to secure some of these pieces down. I might add some yarn. When you bring this over to the sewing machine, uh, you might find it helpful, depending on the stitches that you use. If you're using something really dense, you might want to use uh, an interfacing on the back, a stabilizer. So here I have uh, some phone book pages. These smaller phone books get dropped off like once a year. Save those. You could put this underneath of your work to stabilize it. You can iron flat some coffee filters, double those up and put it underneath of your work. And that will add a stabilizer to your stitches. Or you could use um, embroidery stabilizer. This is a tear away. Uh, you could even use a cutaway if you wanted to. You're not going to see it, but this will help keep your stitches nice and even, help prevent any skip stitches, things like that. You are sewing through one, two, at least three layers of fabric, <laughs> and this will just help stabilize your work. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this or dry this glue. We're going to move over to the sewing machine. I don't know that I'm going to stitch down everything because I will be covering this with tulle when we're done. So the tulle is going to hold down every single one of these pieces permanently, but I do want to fill in a little bit of these areas with some stitches. And uh, also I might add some yarn just to add some interest to this piece. So here we are at the sewing machine. I thought it might be helpful to show you the uh, the needles in my machine that I'll be using for all of this quilt. I'm using the Smith's Universal Needles. Uh, currently, I do have the 8012 size in my machine. It might be, uh, depending on the thickness of my pieces, I might have to bump up to a larger needle, the 9014. But we're going to start with the 8012 and see how that does with these pieces. And uh, throughout this quilt, I will be using a variety of threads. <laughs> I'll be using some polyester threads. I'll be using some embroidery threads. Uh, currently, I have the AK Trading Company thread. This is a polyester thread in both the top and bottom. And for this part, I went ahead and matched the thread color up with the back, the stone color of my piece. And of course, this is all going to be subject to what you want to use. Uh, I just want these stitches that I'm doing just to sort of blend in and, uh, and start sewing down some of my pieces. Now on the lighter parts and bits of fabric, the stitches will really show and just give another element of design. And then in some of the darker pieces, it'll completely disappear. Uh, I think I am going to start with just a zigzag stitch. And you'll set the width and the length depending on the look that you're going for. So the settings uh, you'll need to play with because you'll want to adjust that for how wide and how long you want your stitches to be. I'm going to lay some tearaway stabilizer underneath of my piece. This all will be removed because it is a tearaway and I don't want it to stay in my project once it's all done. And I'm just laying it right underneath and we can start stitching. Now I'm going to fast forward through this part. Again, I am using tool over top of my entire quilt. So I'm not really so concerned with stitching every single one of these pieces down, but I'm going to go ahead and just add some interest to these lighter pieces. You could use a straight stitch. You could use a zigzag stitch like I'm using. You could use any of the decorative stitches in your machine. I think that would be really pretty. Using a variety of different stitches will give your quilt a really unique look. 
you can see I'm just stitching here and there because I'm covering my quilt with tulle. I'm not going to worry about stitching down each and every one of these little snippets that I've added. If you're not covering your quilt with tulle in the end, then you will want to go through and stitch down any of the fabric bits that you are adding to your pieces. Just going to bring you along for this part of the process and we'll slow down here in just a second. Now once you've done all of the stitching that you want to do, I might go back in uh, once I stop filming and really fill in some of these places, maybe with some different color of thread. Uh, but I wanted to show you what you could also do. And this is called couching. This is some eyelash yarn. See that pretty, pretty yarn? <laughs> it's kind of the colors of the little pieces of fabric that I've added to the stone piece. I think it would be really pretty to add some of this in there. So using the same zigzag stitch, maybe adjusting it a little bit wider. Uh, I'm going to lay this down in certain places and add some of this yarn in different colors. I have this one. I have this stone color. It's just a gray fuzzy type of yarn. And then I have one that's a little bit darker like this. And here and there, I'm going to add some more interest to this piece. So I'll just bring you along for part of that process. I have always had a huge love for couching yarn onto my quilts. It's one of the things that I love to do in my art quilts. I'm just going through and adding little bits of different colored yarns here and there. It just transforms and adds different texture to this piece. All the raw edges that hang over the edge of the piece, that'll all be trimmed up nice and pretty when we're done. Sometimes I use a single strand of yarn. Sometimes I double it up. Sometimes I even twist it and make it thicker. I think it's a lot of fun. If you've never experimented adding yarn to uh, your quilts, your art quilts, or even journals, fabric cover journals. Oh, I urge you to break out your yarn stash and have fun playing. <laughs> what I love about it too is that you can just have fun creating and all the stress of being accurate, accurate seam allowances, all of that is gone and we're just playing and having fun. Also, if you haven't ever done this and you want to give it a try, just keep in mind that it's all fabric and if you don't like it in the end, you can just simply cut out another piece and start all over again. <laughs> I know in this video I'm taking a lot of time showing making this actual piece, but I wanted to show you all of these techniques in case you might want to try any of these things that I've done to transform the regular fabric into something totally unique and custom to my quilt. So thanks for being patient with me today. <laughs> So once you've done all of the embellishment that you want to do, I filled in some of the areas with a bit more yarn. Uh, we're ready to go ahead and remove any stabilizer that we use. And this just tears away from the back, depending on your stitches. If you use a more dense stitch, it really per perforated that tear away and you can easily tear it away. 
Uh, I'm just concerned with getting the bulk of this stabilizer off. Just like this. I'm going to go through and remove any stabilizer. Phone book pages tear away very easy. This is a pretty heavyweight uh, tear away for embroidery, so it doesn't want to tear as easily. And I used a zigzag stitch, and so removing it is not quite as easy as if you were using a satin stitch, but you can see you're just going to work through and remove the majority of whatever type of stabilizer you used. And if some remains on the back, that is perfectly fine. Okay, here we are. I have the majority of my uh, interfacing removed. And really what that does is just remove a lot of the stiffness. If you left that in there, uh, your piece would be really stiff. And I know it's a little bit of a pain to remove the bulk of that. However, the stabilizer really helped keep my piece from doing a lot of puckering, which could happen when you're doing lots of stitches onto uh, your fabric. So I don't have any puckering. My piece lays nice and flat, and I've removed the bulk of my interfacing. There's still some there. So now we can go through and trim away exactly to the edge any of these extra bits of fabric or yarn that we've added. So I'm just going to go through and trim away all the extra So here is our completed piece number eight. I have this little bit here. Let me just, oh, <laughs> it was loose. So here is piece number eight. All embellished, ready to go onto our quilt. And so officially, now we're ready to go ahead and add our first piece. So I have my foundation fabric here. I'm just gonna move this pattern right out of the way. So here we are. Our first official piece for this quilt. Now you'll see I'm not starting at the very edge. We will trim away the extra bits around the edges of this quilt once we're done. I'm just going to be starting down towards the bottom just like this and I'll be using glue to put my piece down into place. Now we can go ahead and let this dry. We're gonna move to the next piece. And so that is the method if you want to use, oh, I still have a little bit of trimming left to do. <laughs> if you want to use uh, the muslin as the foundation for your pieces, you would follow the same manner, doing uh, the exact method that I showed you and adding embellishments at this time if you want to. And again, that's totally optional. There we go. <laughs> of course, I'm gonna have all these little bits every which way, but that's okay. There's piece number eight. I'll go through and do a little haircut on some of this yarn, just like that. Now let me pull up the map and we're going to take a look at the next piece. The next method and way that I like to create my pieces is using freezer paper. So I have a, just a piece of freezer paper here and the freezer paper has a shiny side. That's the plastic coating that actually fuses onto the fabric. 
and then a dull side which we can write on okay freezer paper you can reuse this so if you cut a large piece and apply your piece to the foundation fabric when you remove the freezer paper don't throw it away because you can create smaller pieces from that piece so here's some freezer paper and we're going to move up to let's see let's start with position number seven we'll start building right on top of uh, piece number eight we've already laid this down on the foundation let's go ahead and start here and here we're going to start working our way up and we'll do these next two pieces with uh, freezer paper so number seven on our color swatches is the earth color so I brought over my selections for the earth color and I'll use both of these one here and one there just to add some interest so here's my earth colored fabrics we're going to take our pattern and we're going to take a piece of freezer paper. We're going to cut ourselves off. <laughs> we're going to cut ourselves off a piece of this freezer paper so we don't have to shift the whole thing around. I like using freezer paper for raw edge applique because you can buy a great big roll of it and you can keep reusing it. So here we are. I'm going to move this pattern up a little bit so you can see. Make sure we're in the camera. Okay. With the shiny side facing your pattern, the dull side up, we're going to lay that right over top of our pattern piece. And we're going to trace directly on the line. I like to make little indications so that I know exactly which way to lay my piece down once I have it all cut out. And again, you can mark it with the number of the piece you're working with so you don't lose track of your pieces. So just like that, I've indicated which way is right side up, and uh, which piece is which. This one will go on the left side of the quilt, the other on the right. Now I'm just going to trim away a little bit of this freezer paper, just like that, but not directly on the line. Then we're going to heat up the iron. And I like using a cotton setting on my iron with uh, no steam for this part of the process. We're gonna bring our fabric and these pieces. And with our fabric, with the pretty side facing up, we're going to press the freezer paper until it sticks to our fabric. And this only just takes a second. So I'm gonna go do that off camera and come right back. Coming back from the iron, you'll see the piece just fuses right to the fabric. And this is not permanent. This piece will actually just peel right off. And because of the size, you can reuse this if you want for any of the smaller pieces. At this point, we can go ahead and cut our pieces out directly on the line. And the freezer paper helps stabilize your fabric, makes it really easy to cut your piece out exactly to the right shape. Just cutting all the way around. Like that. So there is 
is our piece number seven. This will go on the left side of the quilt, just like that. And here's our other piece. Just like that and from the arrows I can tell that my piece goes just like that and now we're ready to put those down onto our fabric foundation so I'm gonna go ahead and scoot the map up just a little bit and use that as a reference just scooting that up a little bit make sure you can see everything Okay, <laughs> so here is our quilt. Here are the two pieces that we're adding. And you'll see there's a small little gap in between piece number eight and where piece number seven starts. So we're gonna make sure that we leave that little gap just like this and line that piece up just like that. And piece number seven actually comes over here and goes up just like that, just like that. You'll see a little bit of black foundation showing through there. That will give us our stained glass appearance. Before we remove the freezer paper, we're gonna add a little bit of glue. This glue is so thick, I need a new bottle. <laughs> It takes forever for it to go through. I should keep it upside down so that this part doesn't take as long. Actually, you know what? This one is much faster. I'll use the glue wall for this piece. Theoretically. <laughs> And you'll see, I'm not covering the entire piece, but I am getting right up to the edges, a little bit on the edge, just like this. And here and there throughout the piece. And once you've applied the glue, we can lay it right back down. Just like that. I think that's perfect right there. I'm just gonna Press that right into place. You could bring in your iron and dry that glue if you wanna speed up the process. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a little bit of glue to the back side of this piece. Just like that, just a little bit here and there. And we will line this piece back up. Just like that, that looks really good. And press that piece into place. Once the glue is dry, if you simply pick at the edge of the paper, your freezer paper should pop right off, just like that. So there is that piece into place. You might want to wait for your glue to dry. I'm doing this while it's wet, <laughs> but it just simply comes up just like that. So freezer paper to add your pieces works really, really great. Very cost effective and is pretty quick to assemble your pieces using freezer paper. Now I'll bring over the heat and bond because the process is almost like this, except it's a little tiny bit different and you will need a window or a light pad in order to do uh, heat and bond for your pieces. Now for the third method that I wanna show you today and one of my favorite ways of making pieces for raw edge applique is using uh, heat and bond. And of course you could use any kind of fusible that you want. Uh, one of my preferred ones is heat and bond light. I have a great big bolt of it. I buy it when it's on sale. And I save it for projects just like this. But this is an adhesive. And when working with heat and bond light, we are actually working from the back side of our fabric. So I have my light pad here. 
You could, of course, hold your pattern up to a window if you need to, but when we trace our pieces with a fusible like heat and bond, we're gonna actually be tracing from the back side of our pattern. So instead of like freezer paper tracing from the front, we need to have a reversed image of our pattern. So I'm gonna turn on my light pad. I'm gonna take my pattern and I'm gonna flip it pretty side down right over top of the light pad, just like that. And I can see the outline of piece number 16 and that's what we're gonna do, piece number 16 together using the heat and bond light. So now I can bring in my heat and bond light. I can see my piece and I'm gonna trace directly on the line, piece number 16, just like this, all the way around, piece number 16. And uh, let's put a 16 on there. And this is the bottom, it's gonna go up like this. And yes, okay, that'll help me. That'll give me a good reference. So there's our piece. Let me just do a rough cut. All of this extra heat and bond light gets used for other small pieces. So we'll save that. And here is our template for piece number 16. I can turn that off now off off <laughs> and here's the fabric that I've chosen for number 16 and 16 was uh, right here and 16 on our color swatch map is mossy color a moss color this was uh, the closest thing I had to moss and it has polka dots but that's okay <laughs> I'm gonna just do a rough cut little swatch of this fabric that I've chosen to use for 16 just like that and I'm going to bring this to the iron and following the directions for your fusible instead of pressing it to the front of your fabric we're pressing it to the back side okay so just like that I will give that a press and come right back coming back from the iron here's my piece we're ready to cut that out on the line so let me just move this stuff right back out of the way we'll flip this pattern right side up and we'll move this light pad out of the way now we can cut our pattern piece directly on our line Just like that, there's piece number 16. Piece number 16 goes right along the right side edge of our quilt, just like that. Just like that, I think that's gonna look fantastic even with the polka dots. So you'll remove the paper backing off of your piece and the adhesive actually stays on your fabric. If you can see that shiny, that's the fusible. You will lay your piece into place exactly where you want it and there's a little bit of a gap in between these pieces that's going to be fantastic you lay it into place and you come back with your iron and you fuse that right down into place so the heat and bond is a great quick way it's a little bit more costly buying fusibles but it's very quick again you are using a reversed image so a window or a light pad but yeah, very quick way to make your pieces using heat and bond. You could do your entire quilt that way if you wanted. So there are the three ways, using the muslin as your backing for your pieces, freezer paper, and heat and bond. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start building up the pieces a little bit uh, and add some more to the foundation before we're done with today's video. And I wanna move you over to the long arm. Uh, I've already created the pieces for the full size version to lay in the very top part of my quilt. And I wanna show you that process before we go today. 
Before we move over to the long arm, I want to show you the process of adding the pieces to the half size version of this quilt. So in each one of these pictures, you'll see the pieces with the freezer paper on them and then the reveal once the freezer paper is off. I'm building this quilt from the bottom up and I've decided to work on the two sides, the left and the right first, going up the side of the quilt. I think the exciting part is once you have dried the, the glue with the freezer paper, and the glue is dry and you reveal the fabrics underneath when you pop off the freezer paper. <laughs> I don't know why I just get so much sat satisfaction out of the big reveal. I think this is looking so fantastic. Once I have the archway up at the top, I'm going to go start filling in all of the background stones. Something about these pieces on this dark background, I am really loving how this quilt is turning out. Coming along the top edge, over top of the archway. And I'm just eyeballing these pieces. Some of them might not be exactly cut out 100% right. But that's okay, it just all seems to flow together. Now that I have this top corner done, I'm going to stop for this video and show you where I am with this quilt. Isn't that fantastic? I do have a little bit of a larger gap in that top right hand corner that I might go back in and fill. Moving over here to the long arm, I wanted to show you this process too because I thought it might inspire you for other alternative methods for making this quilt. So you'll remember I told you the foundation fabric for this quilt is not the color that I want to be seen from the front of the quilt. So it, it did not matter what color I was using for my foundation fabric. The fabric that I'm adhering all my pieces too. So here on the long arm I have the backing fabric, I have the batting, and then my foundation fabric and that's just pinned. I haven't started quilting anything. The way I'm making this quilt, I'm starting at the top and working my way down, is I have the pieces made, all the pieces are made, and I used a little bit of Fabri-Tac glue right in the middle so all the edges can still be lifted up, but this piece is not going to move around while I'm working on it. Now I've chosen a, this is sort of like a tea stained muslin fabric. It's almost close to this color. It's just not quite as orange and I don't know how it appears in the video, but uh, this is a tea stained muslin that I just have scraps of and I want this to act as like a mortar in between all of my stones in the wall. So I just have little bits and strips and pieces of mortar fabric placed in between all of these pieces. I just lay them down and tuck it right up underneath of all of these pieces so that when you see around each one of the pieces, this tea stained muslin is shining through and not the foundation fabric. This fabric that I'm using will vary as I work my way down. I want to, I might want to change the color of the mortar and make it look older in some places or mossy or darker. So I might end up changing this fabric as I work through the quilt, but I've tucked it in, lifted up all the pieces and just tucked it in so that you, uh, it just hides right underneath. So each one of these pieces does have a little bit of fabric tack glue and they're just just like uh, liquid pinned into place. So as I advance my way through the quilt, uh, I'll put some more pieces on here and then I'm going to cover it with uh, this tool that I have, just like this. I'm just gonna lay this up here, but I'll position it all nice and pretty right over top. 
and then I'll come in and do some quilting and I know that I want to quilt in between all of my pieces but I might also do some quilting over top of some of them what's really nice about adding the tool is once this is quilted even if you just did some hand quilting or very minimal straight line quilting all of the raw edges are down they will not lift up once the tool is in place but before I add the tool, here's some really fun stuff that you might want to think about. I have some thread strings left over from bobbins and cutting threads off my quilt. I might lay some of those on top of one of my pieces. I have some really cool embellishments like this. Uh, I'm not quite sure what this is made from, but it's a flower. I might lay that on there. Uh, I have some sequins that I might lay down on some of my blocks. Just elements that would add some interest and some design. Might put that there. And then once you cover it with the tool, everything's going to lay nice and flat. And I can do my quilting just like that. Once this is quilted, you can always come back over top of it and add elements on top of that as well so isn't that awesome so this is how i'm going to assemble this quilt it'll be kind of like a quilt as you go project i'll continue adding pieces as i advance down towards the bottom and i will cover it with tool and quilt each section as i go down and yes so this is where i am with the full size version and this is how I'm constructing this one. I thought before we finish up for today, I'd bring you along and show you some picture updates of where I am with this quilt. Isn't that awesome? I love it so much. So I'm quilting the pieces down with the tool on top, working my way down and when I advance the quilt I just smush all the muslin up to the quilted section and move on. Then I thought it would be fun to show you how I actually quilt through the pieces. The muslin is laid over top. I'm just going to bring you along as I am quilting down this middle section. Yes, I'm already to the middle section on this one. We have not done the middle section on the half size quilt and we'll be working on that together next Sunday. You can see here that in the dark parts of the trees, I've taken some lighter green eyelash yarn and just cut little snippets to add some highlights into those darker tree areas. I think that's really fun. <laughs> I did not sew any of those down. I just clipped them and they lay right on top of the fabric. And then I just lay the tool right over top of everything. Some parts I do more quilting in. Some parts I leave unquilted just to give a different texture throughout the quilt. There's no rules. I want you to have fun. Try different things. Just working my way through all the different pieces. I changed the color of my thread. Now I'll come over top of this red section. The red section, I actually did some fussy cutting out of my fabric for my coral color. So there's little bits of leaves in the fabric and I love that. There's some darker red and some more coral red. Really adds a lot of different interest. Once I've gotten all the pieces in that section quilted, then I can think about adding some elements on top, like some beads. Ooh, I really want to add some of these red beads. So I've beaded the center section of this red flower. I think that's really pretty. 
And then I've advanced down to the next section. And this is where we're going to pick up next week when we continue with this art quilt. So I know, my glory, this video has been super long, but I hope that it has answered a lot of your questions and taken away the fear of creating this art quilt if it is something that interests you and you really want to try. I hope you have so much fun. Next week, we're going to fill in the middle section of the smaller quilt together. And I have lots of footage to show you of me actually quilting the larger one on the long arm. So that might be interesting for you to see. And yes, I look forward to seeing you next Sunday. We're filling in the middle section and then we'll be close to creating our quilt layers and doing some quilting. Till I see you next time, have fun creating. Bye everybody.